So here we're going to discuss efficiency and how to calculate it or use it in calculations. First of all, efficiency is essentially a percentage of the energy that is useful to us. So the equation for percent efficiency is the energy output over the energy input. So when we're talking about output, we're talking about essentially the useful energy that we used. Um, and the energy input is like how much was used by that device. So for example, if we have a light bulb, uh, let me draw a quick light bulb here, light bulb with a little element in the middle. If we supply a regular, let's say 120 volts to this light bulb, we use a certain amount of energy. Let's say it's a, um, let's say over the course of a day, this light bulb uses, I don't know, 2000 joules of energy. So that's how much like electrical energy actually goes through the light bulb and out the other side. Now, some of that gets turned into light energy and maybe only, I don't know, a hundred joules, oops, a hundred joules of that electrical energy gets turned into light energy, we can calculate the efficiency. It's just gonna be our energy output, which is 100 joules, over that 2,000 joules provided by the electricity to give us 5% efficiency. So essentially only 5% of the energy input, the electrical energy gets turned into light energy. This is pretty typical for an incandescent bulb like this. One other thing to realize is that energy and power are very closely related. Energy is just power over time, right? So if we write that off to the side, energy is just power over time, right? So if we substitute in here our power input and our power output, we can cancel out the time and we can come up with another equation for efficiency. And that is our power output over our power input. So these two things are essentially equal each, to each other. Depending on what we're given in the question, we can either work with energy or power here to get the same answer. So in this question, practice problem one, we have a forklift using 5,200 joules of energy. So that's how much it uses to lift a 50 kilogram mass, a height of four meters at a constant speed. So we're basically lifting an object up. We know the forklift uses 5,200 joules, right? Think about it, is this gonna be the energy input or the energy output? In this case, because that's how much is actually used by the machine, that's gonna be the input. So the energy in is 5,200 joules. We need to find the energy output, like how much, how much work did it essentially do, right? That's essentially what the output is. So in this case, um, we know we're lifting a box a certain height, or a mass a certain height. So in that case, the type of energy we're gonna be dealing with is gravitational. And we know that's just mg delta h. If we assume this is on Earth, it's just gonna be 9.81 times, oh, the mass, I did it the wrong way. Either way, times 50, which is the mass, times four meters, which gives us a gravitational potential energy of 1962 joules. So notice how this is how much work we actually did to the box, yet the machine used 5,200 joules of energy. Where do you think this energy was lost? Well, if it was like a gas-powered forklift, probably a lot of that was lost in heat, right? Because a gas-powered engine loses a lot of heat. So anyways, we can calculate our efficiency. I'm just gonna do EFF for efficiency, equals 1962 over 5,200. And the joules are obviously going to cancel out. When we convert this to a decimal, let's just double check, 5,200. Um, it's going to be 0.3773, or if we round that to the nearest percent, 38% efficient. There we go. So in this question, we're pulling a car up an embankment. Um, I'm, not, I'm going to draw a box instead of a car. And the car is 1,200... Uh, 50 kilograms, so 1250 kilograms, and it's pulled up a height of 1.8 meters. Oh, the height, sorry, I should, I should, this is wrong. The height it goes up, so it basically is going up a ramp. You can sort of think of it like that. And the height that it goes up is, um, what was it, 1.8 meters, right? The height that it's lifted is 1.8 meters. And the cable exerts a force of 5,500 newtons. 
and the distance for which this takes is 12.6 meters. So you might be thinking, how's that different from the 1.8? But the distance is like the actual distance the box traveled. You can think of this as work, right? 12.6 meters. So you can think of it like this. This is sort of the situation that's happening. So ideally, we're just lifting a box straight up 1.8 meters. But realistically, we have to pull it this whole 12.6 meters along the ground. So there's going to be some energy that's lost, of course. Um, so anyways, what is the amount of useful energy produced? You can think of the useful energy as like, what actually, what, what's the difference between the beginning and the end? And the difference in energy is going to be basically the difference in height, right? It started off at this level and it ended up at this level, 1.8 meters. So the energy, the useful energy produced was essentially to lift the box 1.8 meters. We know how to find that energy. It's just mg delta h, where mass is, what was it, 1250, g is 9.81, delta h is 1.8 meters. And if we do this calculation, we get 22,000 kilojoules, or rounded to kilojoules, 22 kilojoules, if we divide by 1,000. There we go. What amount of energy is actually used to pull the car from the ditch? The car from the ditch. Um, notice how this is more referring to work, right? Because it's like how much energy was actually expended pulling this thing the 12.6 meters. So we can think of this as like the work required. And it's just work we know is just force times distance. And in this case, the force was 5,500 newtons times 12.6 meters. And if we do that calculation and round it to the nearest kilojoule, two significant digits, it's going to be 69 kilojoules. So the efficiency is essentially the actual work done, or sorry, the, the useful work done, which is just this 22 kilojoules. We just raised it by 1.8 meters. But the actual work it took us to do that was 69 kilojoules. So it's just gonna, we're just going to divide those things. So the efficiency in this case is just 22 kilojoules over 69 kilojoules, which gives us a percent, ran to the nearest percent, of 32. Awesome. One more little question here. Uh, in a race, a 54-kilogram athlete uh, runs from rest to a speed of 11.5 meters per second, the efficiency is 85%. How much energy did the athlete provide? Well, we know the efficiency is just equal to the energy output divided by the energy input. So in this case, we have the efficiency, right? It's, what is it, 85%. Now, when we do math with percents, we always have to convert it to a decimal. So the efficiency here, in this case, we're going to do a 0 0.85, right? So what we need in order to do this, we're, and we're trying to find input energy, right? We're trying to find out, like, how much energy did the, the athlete basically use um, in total? And we know they started from rest and ran to a, or accelerated to a speed of 11 meters per second. So essentially, rest, we can think of it this way. The kinetic energy at rest is zero, right? We're at rest. We have zero kinetic energy. And the kinetic energy at 11 meters per second is what we need to find because that's how much you increased your kinetic energy by. We know this is 1 half mv squared. So we can calculate this. The mass is 54 kilograms. The speed is 11 squared. So what's the total amount of energy required to get the athlete up to that speed in an ideal world? It is 3,267 joules. So think about it. Ideally, if there was no waste energy, that is the amount of joules it would take to accelerate a 54 kilogram object to 11 meters per second, right? Because we're going from zero to that. Unfortunately, the human body is not perfectly efficient. In this case, it's saying it's 85% efficient. So we need to find the input energy, like how much energy was actually burned during this time. And we can do that by just essentially filling out this equation and solving. So we know the efficiency is 0 0.85, and we know that the equals energy out, which is 3267 over energy in. And if we're just solving for in, we're basically just, we can just swap these two, right? So we can say energy in is just equal to 3267 over 0 0.85, which is, da, 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 let's see if that answer is right up there, 3267 divided by 0 0.85 is 
um, rounded to two significant digits, well, it's 38, 40, 4 joules to two significant digits. We can turn it into kilojoules, 3.8 kilojoules. There we go. So it actually burned, the athlete actually burned more calories, 3267 of those calories, or sorry, joules, I should say, um, went into actually increasing the speed. The other, the other amount probably went into just waste heat and, of course, regular body functions like your brain and your stomach and stuff like that. Challenge for you, give the next questions a try for yourself. We will take them up in class tomorrow.